the derivative of natural log of x. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. It's a pretty nice one, just 1 over x. Suppose that it's not natural logarithm. Natural log has a base of e. Okay. Suppose it doesn't have a base of e. Suppose that it has a base of b. Then it's 1 over x times natural log of b in the denominator. That's it. Ready to go to work? Let's do it. <laughs> Derivative of natural log of 1 over x squared. Okay. No. Uh, two ways to do the problem. Okay. And I I, I got to show you both ways. Uh, please do not say, well, just show us the easy way. I can't tell you the easy way. I don't, I don't know what everybody's brain will gravitate differently in this one. So I'm going to use the uh, chain rule. Or natural log of u. What's the inside? or x to the negative 2, derivative of natural log of u, 1 over u, derivative of x to the negative 2. Negative 2 x to the negative 3. So we're going to be careful here. Okay, we're going to be very, very careful. But uh, as I put in that negative 2, I've got 1 over x to the negative 2 times negative 2x to the negative third. So I want to try to simplify that. What is 1 over x to the negative 2? Just x squared. Times negative 2x to the negative 3. So if I'm multiplying, what do I do to the exponents? I add them, so I end up with Negative 1, so I'll have x in the denominator. So I have 2 over x. Negative 2 over x. Are we okay with that? That's, yeah. go ahead. Yep, so as I multiply these, the 1 times the negative 2 gives me negative 2. And then x squared times x to the negative third would be x to the negative 1. And x to the negative 1, I will drop that to the denominator. Better? Okay. So there is a different way to do it and a way that I think is easier. Are you ready? Okay. You do whatever you want. I'm going to rewrite it. Is everybody okay with that? I'm going to rewrite it again. Do you remember from your properties of logarithms that you could take the exponent and dump it out front? So if you don't remember it or if you don't like it, then you don't have to do it this way. You can do it the first way. But if I simply just rewrite it as negative 2 natural log of x, now the derivative is really, really quite simple. f prime of x is negative 2 times, what's the derivative of natural log of x? So I get negative 2 over x. What's the derivative of natural log of x? 1 over x times negative 2. So, it's up to you. We all good? Okay. Uh, you know, logarithms just have some of those unique properties. So, uh, let's uh, let's try. Let, I'll, we'll rewrite this one. We'll, we'll go. I, let's try log base 4 of 4x. Four let's do that one.
Now, the 4 is not an exponent, is it? Do you remember how you can simplify products of logarithms? You can write them as two logarithms added together. So this becomes f of x is equal to log base 4 of 4 plus log base 4 of x. Are you okay with that? What does this mean? It means 4 to what power is 4? 1. Do you remember the property that these are inverse operations and they cancel out? We're just left with 1. So f of x is 1 plus log base 4 of x. Have I taken the derivative yet? I have not taken a derivative yet. So the question log base 4 of 4 means 4 to what power is 4? 4 to the first power is 4. The other way to think about it is that log base 4 and base 4 are inverse operations. They cancel, leaving, with, leaving you with the exponent. I will now take the derivative. f prime of x is equal to, what's the derivative of a 1? 0. What's the derivative of log base 4 of x? Look at example C. There's no easy way to rewrite this. What rule should I use? Quotient. Derivative of the top times e to the x minus All over. What is e to the x squared? e to the 2x. What could I factor out of the numerator? e to the x, and we will square it. If you have a power to a power, what do you do? Multiply, so we have e to the 2x. I suppose you could leave it like that, but I write it like that so that we can eventually cancel an e to the x. So I can factor an e to the x out of the numerator right now, correct? And I get e to the x times 1 over x minus natural log of x all over e to the 2x. So what will happen? One of the e to the x's will cancel leaving me with 1 over x minus natural log of x all over e to the x. Can I leave my answer like that? Why? Yeah, it's a complex fraction. You have a fraction and a fraction. So what am I going to do? Common denominators. So I will multiply top and bottom by x here. And I have 1 minus x natural log of x over x over e to the x over 1. Multiply by the reciprocal. I get 1 minus x natural log of x. There we have it. <laughs> Try letter D on your own. Go. Because you have a fraction in a fraction. See that? 
Okay, let's check out and see how you did. Uh, this is a double chain rule. I start out with the square root of u, or u to the 1 half, and the inside is the natural log of 2x minus 1. The derivative of u to the 1 half is 1 over 2 roots of u. <clears throat> the derivative of natural log of 2x minus 1, that's the chain rule again. Set so the chain rule, I have the natural log of u, and the inside is 2x minus 1. The derivative of natural log of u is 1 over u. The derivative of 2x minus 1 is 2. So I multiply these two together right here. I get 2 over 2x minus 1. Then I have to take these two and multiply them together. The 2s will cancel. I get 1 over, I have the root of u, which is the root of natural log of 2x minus 1. I have 2x minus 1. And that's it. I'm sorry, okay, the first here. Okay. Why did we have to do the chain rule here? Because the derivative of the inside is 2. So, again, you, at, you I'm glad you're asking the question. It is the question we went over yesterday, which is this. If you have sine of x, the derivative is cosine of x, right? So suppose I have sine of 2x. Would you tell me that the derivative of sine of 2x is cosine of 2x? You would say you would have to set up the chain rule because it's composition. You have an inside piece, and the derivative of 2x is 2. You would say 2 cosine of 2x. It's the same piece here. Exactly. You got it. Flip it over. f of x is 5 natural log of x plus 3 over 4 minus 2 natural log of x. What rule? Quotient rule. Derivative of the top. Five over x. Right, so we have minus, and Katie says as she looks at the derivative of the bottom, she says the derivative of the bottom is going to be 0 and then negative 2 over x. So she's got a plus 2 over x times the top, which is 5 natural log of x plus 3. All over 4 minus 2 natural log of x, quantity squared. Yeah, this will be tough. So it looks like I have a complex fraction again, don't I? But it also looks like I already have common denominators. They're both over x, aren't they? Isn't that convenient? So f prime of x is, I will multiply the 5 through, I'll get 20. Minus 10 natural log of x. Plus... 10 natural log of x plus 6 all over x all over 4 minus 2 natural log of x minus squared over 1. What happens? Positive 10, x, 10 natural log of x and negative 10 natural log of x go away, leave me with. 26 over, and 
when I multiply by the reciprocal, do you guys all agree that this guy just joins x in the denominator? Like that one? You did? All right. Okay. That's the answer. Got it? Okay, we're going to get to F in a second. We need to add G and H in here. There's two of them that we didn't look at yet that are really important. Oh, I'm very upset with my computer today. So uh, you can take the bottom, uh, divide it in half. We go f of x is equal to the natural log of. No, we're going to go back to it. And we're going to go x cubed times x minus 1 to the 10th power. And we'll do h, which will be f of x is the natural log of x minus 2 to the 4th over 2x plus 5 to the ninth. It takes a while to, you know. No, you got you to gotta be careful. Like, there's some, some problems you could come up with that you're like, okay, this, we're in a safe zone here to where it's like, okay, we're not going to encounter issues. So I'm very confident about those, but... Uh, there are there are others that it would be it would be pretty bad. So, um, looks pretty bad, doesn't it? And would you agree that what it looks like here is we would have to set up the chain rule, and then inside the chain rule we would have the product rule, and then inside of that we would have another chain rule. Raise your hand. If that sounds fun. You're like, okay. Katie's gonna do it like that. Katie, you start that way. We'll do it the other way. We'll we'll let you know what turns out when we get done. How about I use my properties of logarithms? How about I take f of x and I rewrite it as a not natural logarithm of x cubed? Everybody okay with that? Then what? Plus natural log of x minus 1 to the 10th. I think that that was pretty handy. In fact, I'm going to rewrite it again. What else can I do? I could dump the 3 in front. I could dump the 10 in front. I get 3 natural log of x plus 10 natural log of x minus 1. So I want to take the derivative. What's the derivative of 3 natural log of x? Over x. Uh, that was super easy. Was it not? Yeah. Everybody see the derivative? Do I need to work out the chain rule? Let's try to do it without setting up the boxes. What's the derivative of the inside? 1 times derivative of the outside, 10 over x, or 10 over u. So, that's the derivative. If there was a 2 here, then it would be 20. So you need to take the derivative of the inside yet. Just so happens the derivative of the inside is 1. makes it really easy. I would argue that that was a really nice way to take the derivative. Just requires us to remember some of our properties of logarithms. You don't. If you wanted to add them together, you could. What's that? Yep, we'll do the chain rule. 
Yes. This way we can see if you know how to do the logarithms. I mean, this is the way that the functions come up. Uh, so, Grace, uh, we would set it up like this. 10, natural log of u, and x minus 1. Derivative of 10 natural log of u. Derivative of x minus 1. Plug the x minus 1 back in. Boom, we're good. What do you think? Okay, two more problems. When you first look at this one, what rule would you have to use? The quotient rule. Ugh, that really does not look fun. Instead, I'm going to rewrite it. f of x is equal to, I can take division and rewrite it as subtraction. The natural log of x minus 2 raised to the fourth power. Minus the natural log of. Well, here it was multiplication, so we did addition. Division, we do subtraction. So we just took this test in college algebra, and I wish that I could tell the kids in college algebra, hey, this is why it's going to be really helpful someday. You know what I mean? But they don't know derivatives yet. So you know, it's like back when you're doing it, you're like, why will I ever want to do this? This is one of the main reasons. It makes differentiation and integration much, much easier. Uh, now what? Yeah, I'm I'm so angry with my smart board that I'm I'm on the verge of throwing something. So No, really not. I I'm no. No. Just <laughs> I hate you. Turn red. <laughs> okay, is everybody okay with that? I'm going to try to not write so fast to let the smart board keep up. F of X is, let's see. What's the derivative of the inside? 1 times the outside, 4 over x minus 2. Minus, what's the derivative of the inside? 2 times the outside. So we've got 18 over 2x plus 5. That is it. Okay. Yes. Sure. Okay. So we have this equation. It says y is equal to the square root of x times e to the x times 2x plus 1 to the 20th power. I wrote it as y equals only for our benefit as we move forward uh, in the problem. We're going to need that. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I sure liked it for these last problems 
when I could take multiplication and separate it into addition. Wasn't that nice? The difference was we had a logarithm sitting there. Do you see a logarithm sitting here? There's an E, but it's not a logarithm. So let's just put in a logarithm. Now, I, so f of x and y are the same thing. I changed it just for the, uh, uh, just, just kind of for the help later on. Okay. So I'm going to take the natural logarithm of both sides. And it looks a lot nicer to take the natural logarithm of y as opposed to the natural logarithm of f of x. Okay. All right. I'm just going to rewrite this now. I am not taking the derivative yet. I have the natural logarithm of y is equal to the natural logarithm of root of x, or can I raise x to the one half? Would you be okay with that? Plus natural log of e to the x plus Is everybody okay with that? Is there any question or concern? Okay. Let's consider our exponents. And please be careful as you look at this. I'm going to take the one half and dump it out front. Is everybody okay with that? Do you remember the relationship between natural log and E? They're inverses, so they cancel, just leaving you with X. What can I do with the 20? So therefore, as I rewrite this, I have not taken the derivative yet. I have the natural log of y is equal to 1 half natural log of x plus x plus 20 natural log of 2x plus 1. So natural log has a base e, so it's literally asking e to what power is equal to e to the x. That's what that is asking. And we would say the question mark could be filled with x. You could move the x out front, and the natural log of e is 1, so it would be x times 1. There's multiple ways to think of that. Are you ready to take the derivative? All right. Let's take the derivative of the right side first, because the left side, you will get a little angry at me, and I, I'm not ready for it. So the derivative of natural log of x, so times 1 half would be 1 over 2x. The derivative of x, chain rule, the derivative of the inside is 2 times the outside, 40 over 2x plus 1. That's the right side, the left side. The derivative of natural log of y. Anybody want to take a guess? 1 over y times y prime. Do you remember when we did implicit differentiation that every time you take the derivative of y, you need to attach a y prime? So I am almost done. I would just like to get rid of this 1 over y so it just says y prime. If I want to get rid of 1 over y, what do I do to both sides? Multiply by y. Nope. I would like to place a y right on the end here, except <laughs> we don't want a y in our final answer. What is y equal to? That. If you wanted to, you could do the product rule three times for that one instead. You know, and that's the other way to go about the problem. Or you can do it like that. That is it. 
And I practiced this lesson yesterday, and I wanted it in exactly half an hour. And here we yeah. be.